So this completely changes where Amazon FBA is heading into the future. It's got me trying to decide whether it's time to get out of the game and it may change your decision to get into the game. Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Miles. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell so that you get more videos like this. So the value of being able to see the big picture, see into the future and see trends as they're emerging or even before they emerge, this skill is like seeing the future and it's literally priceless. Imagine if you could go back to 2014 or 2015 with the knowledge that you have about how the world is today in 2021, imagine if you could go back then. What decisions would you make differently about your career, about your investments, about business opportunities? Would you start that Amazon business about five years earlier? Or would you buy Bitcoin at $100? Think about how much better things would be for you now if you've been able to make those better decisions back then. Well, coming back to today, it's exactly the same looking into the future. The more we know about where the world is going, about how Amazon is evolving from today into tomorrow, the better decisions we can make right now and the better our lives will be at the end of the year, into next year and into the years to come. So a lot depends on the path that we take from here. The changes that are coming may make some people millionaires or multimillionaires, while for some other people, it could lead to ruin, pain, misery, generally bad things. So what's changing and where are we headed? I believe that we are reaching the beginning of the end of the golden era for solo entrepreneurs, that's individuals like me, like you, to be able to come into this Amazon ecosystem start a successful business from zero with you know, no outside help, probably no capital or any excess uh, outside funding, very little skills or experience to start. And then to build this thing from zero into this profitable, life-changing business that we can, again, like change our lives and potentially become millionaires or multimillionaires. Being able to do that with such a low baseline and a really good, quite reasonable chance of success is just an incredible opportunity. And that's the opportunity that I think we're starting to near the end of. And again, I'm not talking about things that are happening today, so if this doesn't affect you right now, but this is again looking at well, where are we today? Where are we going to be in a year, two years, so that we can make the best decisions today for our future selves. And I don't think this is ending because there isn't money to be made on Amazon anymore. I think it's completely the opposite. There is more and more money to be made on Amazon. You can see how, how quickly the space is growing at an incredible rate. COVID last year just completely blew the whole space forwards by a few years as well. So the pie is big and it's getting even bigger. That's not why it's ending. I believe that it's the beginning of the end because bigger fish than you or I are starting to get into the game and they're doing so in a big way. And think big players with big money, teams of people, basically professionalizing the space. Who are these firms and these companies? One way to think about this is like they're real estate developers for Amazon real estate. So they see this real estate, these listings, these products, these brands that are selling on Amazon, they see them already generating cash flow, already making a return. And they know that they can come in, they can buy those assets, that real estate, they can apply their formula to it, they can develop it more, end up not only appreciating the value of the real estate itself, but also generating more cash flow once they've done their thing with it. That's pretty much it. So these firms are coming in, they're buying Amazon real estate. What is Amazon real estate? It's, I mean, it's a bunch of things, but really all it comes down to is listings and reviews. Now, Thrashio, which is T-H-R-A-S.io, they are the sort of original player doing this. They started only a few years ago, um, but I believe they're the biggest one now. There are now probably 50 or 100 different firms doing the same thing. And this is again, all something that's happened in the last couple of years. Um, and that number will continue to grow. So I'll put together a list and all you know news articles and resources as well that you can continue to pursue yourself after this video. I'll put a link down below so you can go follow that and just check out that full list. Now, what's driving this boom? Why is this actually happening this way? So I think there are two things that are contributing to where things are headed. Up until recently, there's been a real constriction on capital being like being able to actually get into this space. So most of these businesses, really a lot of them have been bootstrapped. So again, it's this idea of this huge marketplace with all these small sellers, people like me or like you going into this with the, with the desire, the vision to, you know, not build this huge, huge company or to like have this like billion dollar business, but just to change our lives, to live lives that are better <laughs> with, with financial freedom and all of that. So these businesses, like mine was, was bootstrapped. I funded it myself. You're probably funding this yourself as well. And up until recently, if you were going out looking for that funding, you'd probably find that it was actually quite hard to come by. A lot of banks or traditional funding sources wouldn't really be too keen to lend to somebody starting this e-commerce sort of thing. A second holdup is that us sort of solo entrepreneurs, freedom seekers, we're probably not too keen on actually building out a team to do all this stuff for us. Um, you know, maybe we want to do it completely ourselves or maybe just have a few VAs. But that's generally about the sort of limit of where we want to get to. So overall, both of these factors, the lack of capital and also just like lack of desire to scale a team, these two factors mean that 
there's been a lot of, and there is still a lot of just bad potential growth left on the table or basically money left on the table that no one is picking up. So what's changing in a nutshell is that bigger companies and capital has started to find a way to make its way into the space to be able to just start like collecting all of that growth that's not being realized by the smaller entrepreneurs. And this is a normal part of an industry's growth curve, by the way, it normally starts out like that. So there might be one player or a couple of players Suddenly they find themselves on this big wide open field, you know, there's all this space. They start taking as much as they can, but all these other people, sort of like people walking past, see this big open field. They're like, hey, I want some of that too. I want some of that space. So everyone comes in and like the space starts slowly filling out, but it's a huge open field. And then after a certain point, after enough time has elapsed, we get to, I believe, where we are right now, which is where enough players have come onto that field. It's not completely full. There's still empty space around, but like it's nowhere near what it was before. And once you have enough players who are on this field and they're starting to bump up against each other, um, they're not just like able to just expand into this open space. That's when you start to get this consolidation. You start to get either bigger players on the outside coming in going, hey, like if I want to get in on that, I've got to like take that guy's space. Or the players who are on the field, some of them are more successful than others. The bigger ones are going, hey, all right, like I need more scale. I want to keep growing on this field that's now got other people on it. Maybe that's a run-on analogy, but you can sort of see that it works. And that's where we are right now is where it's competitive now. It's definitely not a completely wide open space. There is lots of opportunity left, but you're starting to see that people are coming in. People are starting to want to apply scale, to apply large amounts of capital to this thing so they can take that growth off the table. And again, I'll just stress this one more time. This is big picture stuff. So you don't need to worry or freak out if you're like just launching a product right now, but I'm more and more interested in that. I more and more see the value in just understanding where all of this is going. So this is for you if you're planning in over a number of years, which you should be, by the way, and I definitely am. I think another doubt that I have about what's driving this and how it's all going to play out is I mentioned, so these firms definitely are well capitalized. They can pretty much raise almost as much money as they want to, and they're raising a lot. But the second aspect of is, okay, you can put the money into the field, but do you have the skills to actually play on the field? That's a doubt that I think we won't know the answer to for a while, as it, it's basically going to remain to be seen whether a lot of these other players coming in or these firms, whether they're really able to run a successful Amazon business or not. Because that's the stuff that we're actually pretty good at. We're good at operating these businesses and growing them as well. These businesses that are coming in, they're good at buying businesses because they've got lots of money, but can they operate them? I think inevitably the final answer will have to be yes, because normally when you pump money in and professionalize things, like it just, it evens out. So they'll, they'll get good at it, but how quickly and you know how many mistakes or painful painful lessons will we have to learn along the way by these big firms? I'm not sure about that and we'll see. Another disclaimer with where I'm looking at this, I'm not an expert on mergers and acquisitions or on buying and selling Amazon businesses. I've just started one of my own. That's my only perspective into this. And I'm only calling it as I see it. I'm learning as much as I can because it's A, very interesting and B, it does affect me. So I'm self-interested in learning as much as I can. The confession is that I wasn't as early as I would have liked to have been in actually identifying this trend. So the last time that I actually talked to anyone involved with buying or selling um, was about nine months ago. And it looks like a lot, this space has really evolved in that nine months since then. It's continuing to evolve quickly. So again, I'm, I feel like I'm actually just coming up to speed with how this is all evolving. So we've got these big firms that are acquiring or you know, we could call them roll-up funds or FBA aggregators or there are different terms, but what they're doing is they're coming in, they're buying existing brands and businesses. So what kind of Amazon businesses are they looking for? I'm gonna run through some criteria. I'm literally just gonna read this off. Uh, this is from hanbeck.com. So I'll leave a link down below as well so you can go and see this. I might bring it up on screen, but the criteria basically, private label. So less interested in things like wholesale, definitely not interested in drop shipping, just like lower margins, higher risk, private label is good. You own your own brands, you have brand registry, things like that. You own the IP behind it, um, behind the Amazon real estate. Size, they're looking for size because these are big companies. So each company or each firm is going to be different, but you're looking at between 200K minimum annual net profit, um, sometimes up to half a million or even a million, depending on, again, which firm you go to. Um, profit margins. So might be like 15, 20% minimums. Got to be decent profit margins. Again, with private label, that should be easily achievable. Uh, Amazon focus. So they're all different, right? So I'm going to keep saying that, but um, they're looking for Amazon FBA businesses. So this is a key point no matter where you are in your business right now, and I'm gonna come back to this later, just understand that some things that people have probably told you to do in the past uh, are wrong. And this is something that I've been bullish on and, and just backed myself to do from the start, which is to not go off Amazon. People are like, oh, it's too risky, blah, 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 the platform, they could shut you down. 
No, the idea is that the platform has so much to offer. So you want to just like <laughs> open yourself up to that and you can see it play out. Basically, you want to be building a business that is attractive to the person who's going to buy it because those things that make it attractive to the buyer are the things that make it attractive to you as the operator. And this just proves that most acquirers pretty much want the majority of the business, if not all of it, to be on Amazon. Again, it may change based on the, based on the firm. Uh, they're looking at Amazon FBA more so than uh, your own manual fulfillment. Again, because they're going to be operators of the business, they want stuff hands off. Brand registry, like I mentioned, they want the IP that goes with that real estate. Black hat tactics, so that's around the security of the account. Um, they just want to make sure that you, these listings, their real estate, isn't going to get shut down and basically destroyed. Now, an interesting one is not a fad. So they're more looking for stable categories and stable types of products more so than something that maybe in today and then out tomorrow. They want things that are going to be stable and actually allow them to get an ROI on the price they're going to be paying. So if you're starting, growing, or looking to sell an Amazon business, go and think about those criteria, how your business fits into that. What do you need to do to actually make it fit into those criteria? Again, even if you're not thinking about selling now, making it an attractive business for a potential buyer makes it an attractive business to own yourself right now. So don't just throw these to the side. These are really important criteria. Next point, how much are they actually paying for Amazon FBA businesses? This is a huge thing that has changed and I don't know how it's gonna change, but we'll talk about that now. Basically the value in your, of your Amazon business, and I, I talk about this on my channel a fair bit, it's not as commonly talked about, but it needs to be because it really does make having an Amazon FBA private label business a lot more attractive than a lot of other business models that are much harder to actually sell. You're not really building an asset with a lot of businesses, you're just generating cash flow. So the value in Amazon business is calculated based on your, it's your basically net earnings or seller's discretionary income. I'm not gonna go into the details. You can again, follow the links below and, and really understand this in detail for yourself. But let's just say now it's net profit, your annual net profit over the last 12 months times a number, and that's the, that number is known as the multiple. So I'm gonna go through again from hardback.com, it's the same thing. Uh, these are the criteria that will def determine how high your multiple is. And I'll just tell you now, the range could be a really wide range from let's say 2x, so if you're, if you're earning 200K net profit in a year, 2x would be 400K, so you earned 200K in the last 12 months, then at the point of sale, you get $400,000 for that business, for the value of that business, that's 2x, up to let's say 5x. So if, again, you made 200,000 in the last 12 months, times that by five, so you're gonna sell that business for a million dollars. Plus your inventory, and probably that's about the only other thing, um, that will get added on top of that. Now, 2x to 5x is a huge difference. Like in that example, that's from selling your business for $400,000 to selling it for $8 million, so really big difference. What can make you go from the 2x to the 5x? These are the variables. So it's size, the larger the better. Remember these are big firms that they're already trying to apply scale. So they're not going for your like $50,000 a year profit little brand because it's just gonna cost them so much to even like go through the deal flow of actually getting that thing, you know, getting it from you to them. It's not worth their time and effort to go to, to put all the effort into that. So bigger businesses, better. Um, what does that look like in terms of net profit? So uh, I think I mentioned it before, a lot of them have minimums of like 200, 500, up to a million dollars in net earnings. And the bigger, the bigger it is, the higher multiple you get. Margins, higher margin, better, obviously. Growth profile, a lot of these things are pretty obvious to be honest. The stronger the growth profile, the higher the multiple is gonna be because it looks better to them. Um, if you can put anything on the table that shows that not only is your growth profile strong, but it's actually getting stronger or will get stronger once they acquire it, then you'll get a higher multiple. Um, what else, in terms of these, these, the real estate we're talking about, the Amazon real estate, they want highly ranked products that have some sort of review barrier, review ranking barrier. So that's like the number one product that has you know, 10,000 reviews when everything else below it has like less than 1,000. That product is probably gonna stay there for a really long time and so it's gonna be worth a lot more. That's another thing. Um, and basically like category leaders in those established categories. Again, on the scale aspect, the next one is few SKUs. So for these businesses, it's actually better if you're doing one product that's doing a million dollars in profit a year versus 20 products that are doing $50,000 in profit per year. Because again, they can scale it easier, they can manage it easier with less overhead. Um, and the other thing, going back to again, the yes no criteria, the more sales on Amazon, the better. This is again a key point. If the only takeaway that you get out of this is 
this, I want it to be this, is don't try and split your efforts and go on Shopify and do all these different bloody channels and platforms too early. You will not only, you'll see that your efforts become wasted and you get less and less leverage. And so your business grows slower and slower, most likely. And you'll also see that people want to buy your business for less and less money. So just stay on Amazon. It's an Amazon business, accept that. Right, so those are the criteria. Again, if you want to go through all of this, link will be down below. Where are the multiples going to go from here? That's a harder one to answer. Uh, I think there's a lot of varying opinions on this. And going back to my point earlier of like, these guys are paying high premiums to get into this market right now. Um, quite a few sort of third party observers or brokers and whatnot have the opinion that the multiples are as high as they're gonna get because there's a bit of a bubble or a bit of a frenzy going right now on, on right now for, for these guys to get into the space. Um, do these multiples stay as they are? Do they go up? Maybe it's hard to see them actually continuing to go up. Um, maybe they stay the same, maybe they go down. I think definitely if some of these firms start to fail and start to be not able to operate the business like they expected to, and, and I, think, I think if that becomes public or visible, then those multiples may go down. But uh, that one's up in the air. I think the key thing though is that they're higher than they were before, and that indicates or that is reflective of the way this situation is playing out where there's a lot of money trying to flow into this space. All right, so is this good or bad? Interesting one, the more that I've thought about this, I've sort of changed and gone backwards and forwards on good and bad, for whom, how good, how bad. I think it's pretty clear that if you're an established seller right now or you're on that pathway to actually selling and exiting your brand, and particularly if you're already like pretty far down that pathway, planning to exit soon, this is great for you. Go, you know, grow your brand, exit, send me a message. Maybe we can meet up for a beer on a beach somewhere because uh, I think a lot of people are going to be exiting their businesses in this sort of environment because it's so tempting to do so. Um, yeah, and if your business is bigger on the bigger end, again, most of these firms want these bigger businesses. So let's say you're doing 500K a year in profit, then you could probably easily go to most of these firms and just directly negotiate with them. Even if you're on the smaller end, like I mentioned, you know, 50,000 a year or something, you'll probably still be seeing the benefits if you sell your business because I believe, and maybe there are more discussions or you should go and have a conversation with a broker or someone who's more in touch with the marketplace, but I believe that we're seeing that there's a real halo effect where everything is just being dragged up. So the bigger end of the market is really being pushed up. There's a lot of demand for these aggregators, these roll-ups to buy these firm, uh, these these brands. And then the smaller end is all just sort of getting sucked into that vortex as well as this money comes in. So I think it's good for everyone who's looking to exit. Um, I think to answer the question of is this, is, this, is this good or bad or not, there are a couple of other things to think about. First of all, I don't see any intention or, or moves that these firms are gonna start launching their own brands. They seem to see that the reliable way to prof profitability and return on investment is just find the ones that have already succeeded or are succeeding that are leaving, again, that growth potential on the table and just buy those brands. So what does that mean? It doesn't really change the whole incubation area of the Amazon ecosystem, which is where there's always gonna be this, it's like that space on the field. There's always gonna be this space on the field where new players can still come in and grow new brands. Now, I do think it's gonna get more competitive just because, again, going back to that analogy, more of these spaces are gonna sort of be rubbing up against these like bigger, bigger, more professional players with more money who are probably gonna spend more on advertising. They're probably gonna understand the, the off Amazon channels as well as, as growth, like customer acquisition, for example. There are a lot of sort of industries or niches where your customer acquisition is like a really expensive thing that you do and you lose money on that customer for a very long period of time until you can break even. Those are like competitive, I wouldn't say saturated, but competitive uh, categories or niches or areas. And you could see something like that happening in definitely in specific areas on Amazon where you might see the numbers, they might look profitable on Amazon, but actually there's, they're pumping a lot of money into the back end. So if you try and compete with that and you need to make money up front, because you're again this solo entrepreneur like me or you, then uh, you're gonna struggle in those areas. So, and this is again more in the long term. If you do the numbers, like you can run some pretty simple maths and look at the, I don't have the exact numbers on me right now, but let's say Amazon total sales were like 200 billion or something like that, could be wrong. Um, the whole marketplace, if Thrashio has a billion dollars, which I think they do, then they're probably doing about a billion in revenue something like that, plus or minus. So that's half a percent. So Thrashio is half a percent of Amazon's marketplace. Again, whatever those exact numbers are, is really, really small. 
then even if you add on all of these other firms, which are all smaller than Thrasio and mostly really small compared to Thrasio, you know, maybe you're looking at like 5, 10% in the marketplace. I think that's going to grow over time. But what I mean to say is now, again, this isn't an immediate thing where like if you're selling on Amazon, suddenly all of your competitors are these big professional firms with lots of money behind them. It's still a small percentage that I think will grow over time. So they're not starting their ends, they're buying them, they're still a small percentage of the market. And the other thing is, I think at some point there's gonna be some tough lessons that these guys have to learn. They have, they'll have to go through it the hard way to figure out how to actually operate these brands, to scale them effectively. They won't all be doing it with a perfect track record. So I think that's gonna be a rocky path for them. Um, and there's probably gonna be some sort of correction or a, a number of corrections along the way. So good or bad, good if you're selling now. I, I really just think that this is gonna mature the Amazon space in the long term. And what that means is mature industries in general are just harder for like, if you're an unsophisticated, unsophisticated entrant into that market, it gets harder and harder for you. I think that answer is what I would have said at any point in time making these videos over the last couple of years is that Amazon just gets more competitive each year. So you just need to raise your own bar higher each year. But it's also undeniable that there's just more and more money to be made. So I think it's good for you if you see, if you already saw this pathway of like, okay, I wanna start this business. I wanna you know, give it my all. I wanna learn a lot. I wanna play it well, play this game well. I wanna grow my business and I wanna exit it. I think that pathway now is a lot clearer because the exit is so much more well-defined, the multiples are higher. I think you can, that pathway became a lot more lucrative as this change is happening. I think if you're getting into this from a more desperation aspect, which is the, it's the unfortunate side effect of it being popular as like a really profitable business model, is that a lot of people who aren't really qualified to be starting this business, I think more and more of that demographic are just gonna struggle more and more because it's not that obvious until somebody makes a video like this and tells you that like actually more and more of the people you're competing against are just gonna be smarter and they're gonna have more money. So go into this with the correct expectations. Understand that if that's the pathway you want, that exit pathway, you're gonna do well. Um, yeah, so good or bad, depends on who you are. It uh, depends on who you are and where you are. Now, what to do about it. Last thing to finish this video. So what are your actions? What are your takeaways? First of all, the, the lesson here is build your business itself. Again, that pathway is now more clearly defined. There's more money available to you if you follow that pathway. These guys, again, go down below, open the links, see what these guys are looking for. They're giving you the playbook to follow, to be able to build your business, to sell it for a higher number than you could have sold it before. And that's, that's the life-changing exit right there. Most of the money that you'll ever make in your Amazon business will be when you sell it. If you never sell it, you'll never realize that game. So you wanna get your business as well as following that playbook, Specifically, you want to try and get that business as far along that pathway as you can. So the bigger you can, the bigger you can grow it to, the higher multiple you get, the more buyers will want to buy your business, just the more attractive it becomes for these bigger players. Um, I would say as well, the in terms of building your business to sell, the proof is in the pudding. You don't need to stretch yourself now so early on to try and get across every single channel, every single platform. You will not be as, uh, as capable of doing that as a company with a team of people can do it. Just focus on Amazon, do it really well. Be the elite Amazon operator. That's my advice in terms of building your business to sell. I think you'll grow it faster that way. You'll make more money at the end of the day. Next, start having conversations. If you're thinking about selling or even if you're not, just go have these conversations with at least with brokers. Again, the list of firms is gonna be down below. So you can just go and like start talking to these people. Uh, hmm. I don't wanna shoot myself in the foot here, but I think just because there's a clear list of like these bigger buyers, if your business is in this bigger end, you probably have less to gain from actually using a broker because you know the purpose of the broker is to is to link buyers and sellers. But if there's only 50 big buyers, you can literally just send out an email to all 50 of them, and some of the value in in using a broker is probably gone then. So I would say don't be afraid to go and contact those buyers individually again if you're looking to sell. Um, and yeah, start having those conversations. So the last thing is timeframes. This process could take a while. And given that you want to build your business to sell, given that that's where most of the money is, you want to start looking at this pretty far in advance, 12 to 18 months ahead. So if that's you, start thinking about this now. Start writing down a list of actions you need to take. Start inquiring with, again, brokers or firms or whoever it is. Start thinking about what you're going to do differently to maximize the exit value of your business in 12 to 18 months. That's all I had for this video for today. Um, that's how Amazon is changing. I've got a lot to think about myself because it, like I said at the start, it does change things for me potentially. Hey, whoa, okay, don't go anywhere. I was just about finishing uh, the edit of this video and 
I actually had a conversation and I went for a run and I was thinking about some of the things that I've been talking about in this video. And it's finally just clicked literally today. So I had to make this additional to the video. If all of the things that I've talked about so far in this video have stood out to you because you are right now selling on Amazon, you are in that smaller range. So yes, your, your valuations might be going up a little bit. That's good news. But if you're thinking about how are you going to get from where you are right now to this larger end of the spectrum where you can sell directly to these firms, where you're, you're making, again, whether it's 200K net income, 500K per year, or up to the million dollar mark or more so that you can get to this, the, the end of this pathway and exit with these firms for a much higher multiple and therefore sell your business for like 10 times more than you otherwise would. If that's you and you're trying to figure out that pathway to get there and you're thinking and the gears are turning in your head right now, I think I want to help you. I want to help some people to do that, to, to take it from this current point to this end pathway. And again, you know, forgive me for not having this completely worked out, but it's just this idea that I don't think I can let go. So what I want to do, I want to invest in some of your businesses for equity. It'll be like a, a, an equity stake. And yeah, I want to, I want to put money into the business. And I want to basically just remove whatever those bottlenecks are that are stopping you from getting from where you are to where you want to be to exit at a much, much higher valuation so that you can do very good things with your life and <laughs> be much richer than you are right now. I want to help you do that. Again, I haven't even thought about this process yet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link to an application form. It'll be an expression of interest form that'll be down below. I don't know what that form is going to say yet. I'll be looking, I know that I'll be very, very selective about who I pick through that or who I get through that process. You may see more things about this on the channel later on. It's literally just an idea that's germinating right now. Um, but yeah, in short, it'll be capital and, and you know strategic advice from my end to you so that you can get down this pathway, get from whatever you're making 50K in net income, whether it's 50K, 100K right now. You have to be selling. I don't wanna deal with people who aren't selling or just have ideas. You need to be, I need to see some track record of successful execution because I will be investing in you and developing you as an entrepreneur and as a person, um, as well as your business. And yeah, I wanna get you to that 200, 500, 1 million mark in net income annual. What else? There will be, I'll put the details in the form. If you're interested, if you think that's you and if that's appealing, that you wanna be able to sell this business and get there much quicker, definitely go and check it out. Um, we may have a conversation if, if it looks good, we may not. In either case, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you then.